About two weeks ago, I posted a 23 minute long form factor comparison between the iPad Pro 11 inch and the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. And while it has a lot of useful information and I do encourage you to watch it, if you are deciding between the two form factors, it's long. So if you don't have time to sit through that today, I wanna to give you five reasons why you should consider the iPad Pro 12.9 inch form factor and why I happen to love it so much. But before we continue here, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions as the YouTube algorithm likes that and will help push my content to more people. So the first reason the 12.9 inch iPad Pro form factor might be for you is because of the size of the virtual and physical keyboards that you have with it. So for example here, if I open up this Google Doc, you can see that my keyboard is nice and expansive. I have big keys and I actually have a whole number row. And you can imagine too, if I have a third party or a first party keyboard case from Apple or Logitech or something, um, the keys are gonna be bigger as well than that of an iPad Pro 11 case or an iPad Pro 10.5 or an iPad Air a 10.5 inch case. The keys are gonna be bigger virtually or physically, and if you do a lot of typing, this is definitely going to be a godsend. Secondly, the speaker setup in here, although it shares the same quad speaker configuration as the iPad Pro 11 and the iPad Pro 10.5 and other previous iPad Pro models, um, the size of this thing just allows the sound, I think, to reverberate better. I think the bigger the chassis or the bigger the device, um, the fuller the sound is going to be. So this is gonna be great for music listening and of course other media consumption like movie watching. And speaking of movie watching, reason number three has all to do with media consumption. Bigger is often better when it comes to watching movies, like I just said, watching TV shows, Netflix, whatever. Um, although this is a humongous device, I have become acclimated to it, and it is definitely more enjoyable to watch YouTube and just consume video on than uh, that of a smaller screen, like once again, the 11 inch or the 10.5 inch or the even smaller 9.7 inch form factor. It's bright, it's colorful, and of course has high contrast, just like the 11 inch, but once again, the extra two inches that you get really does make a difference. <laughs> Reason number four also has to do with the screen size. You just have more screen real estate to work with. And if you're doing actual work, like professional work, like video editing or photo editing or whatever, you have a bigger viewer often. I have more room here, for example, to work with my timeline. And if I open Lightroom here, for example, you can see that I have a lot of room for my viewer while having all my controls open. On the iPad Pro 11 or smaller, the viewer is gonna be smaller too. Um, and yeah. It's just nicer if you're doing a lot of work on here. More screen real estate definitely makes your life easier if you're doing stuff like this all the time. And finally, reason number five, this also has to do with screen real estate. You can actually comfortably multitask with this device, especially with the Apple Pencil here. And this is something I do all the time. I'm always doing math homework and just math practice so I can open up my textbook here while writing or just copying down a problem or practice or whatever. With my iPad Pro 11, while this worked, it was a lot more cramped as you may have seen in my previous 11 inch versus 12.9 inch comparison. But yeah, my workflow has definitely changed this semester. That's why I bought this bigger tablet and I am definitely benefiting not only from just the bigger screen for just writing full screen notes, but having the extra screen real estate to open a completely different app like a web browser or a book, for example. If you're doing college work, you will definitely enjoy having all of the screen real estate to have more than one app open. And that about wraps things up. I hope this video helped you out. Once again, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, and subscribe for more content like this. Expect my Motorola Razr full review coming within the next few days. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.